In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Crawl for AI, which is an open source web crawler to crawl literally anything, scrape anything, get whatever information you want from your website or any website. Now, before we start, I just wanna make a quick point. It seems to me like web scraping, you know, legality, etc. Nobody really cares anymore. Google scrapes your website, you know, Perplexity scrapes your website, ChatGBT scrapes your website. Nobody gives a shit. So in my opinion, it's kind of like open season, not legal advice, check things out for yourselves, be careful. But honestly, it just seems like nobody cares anymore. So one thing I always like to do when I'm on a, a new kind of project is I like to look at their GitHub and I like to see when their last update was. So you can actually see 10 hours ago, there was an update, 10 hours ago, there was an update three days ago, two days ago, four days ago, 10 hours ago. What this shows me is that this is a project that is being maintained, that is being improved, and that is worth investing time into because they obviously give a shit. Now, another thing I like to do is look at the actual documentation of the, of the business. And you can see it's one of the number one trending GitHub repositories right now. And you can kind of see why. Now, you guys know that I like to use Gina um, but this is like a free open source version of Gina, but it also gives you other options, okay? So we have multi URL crawling. So this can handle multiple URLs in a single run, which can greatly reduce overhead and speed of crawling. This guide shows you how to do sequential crawling uh, of a list of URLs or parallel crawls subset of URLs in batches, again, using the same browser. And then they have other things like file downloading, okay, which isn't, it's not an option in Gina. Identity-based crawling, so crawl for AI empowers you to navigate and interact with the web using your authentic digital identity, ensuring you're recognized as human and not mistaken for a bot, even though you are a bot. So there's loads of very, very interesting things here, okay, and then there's even some things about extraction, okay. I recommend you use LLM extraction, but you could also use you know, schema-based extraction, um, you know, whatever it might be. I personally don't like this. I don't like LLM-free strategies just because um, you need to account for every single variable, whereas with LLMs, you, you allow LLMs to do the extraction for you, okay? So this is very, very interesting uh, here. Um, Crawl for AI is definitely a project that I recommend you look into. But let's talk about how we can make something very quickly and very easily to show you the power of this project. So what you can do is you can just copy everything on this homepage here on, on GitHub, right? Because it has everything you need, basically. And then we're going to go to Cursor. Um, we'll do File, Open Folder. And then we'll call this New, No, and then Select Folder. And then what I'm going to do is terminal, new terminal, and we're actually going to use the new agentic version of um, cursor. So you do control L, go to composer, click agent here, and then I'm going to say make me a uh, multi URL crawling um, uh, flask project, which takes the home page of um, a website and then crawls 30 found pages using crawl for AI. So we'll paste the GitHub and then I'm just gonna go over to the, um, uh, this, the, the documentation, and I'm just gonna give it a few more things. So I kinda wanna use fit markdown just because um, it should make things a little bit better. Basically what that means is instead of giving you huge amounts of HTML or whatever. It just gives you the most important parts of Markdown. Um, and then let's go for multi URL crawling as well. Uh, and then we'll give it that as well. And then let's see if there's anything else. I mean, we could, if I were you, I'm not gonna do this just because it um, would require a bit more, um, you know, messing around with, but I would also probably give it LLM strategies as well and allow it to also extract information. But just because I'm making something very simple here, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, one more thing I'm gonna add actually, sorry, is I'm gonna just say, uh, and allows for dot, for dot CSV download and 
saves all previous downloads in browser cache slash cookies. And then we'll hit enter here. What this is gonna do is it's effectively gonna make me a universal scraper that is completely free, uh, replacing something like Gina, you know, whatever it might be. So we'll just press accept here. You don't even have to press accept, it'll just do everything. This is the really cool thing about the new agentic version of uh, Cursor. You no longer have to say, now do this, now do that, now do the other. It will just kind of build for you. So it's, it's almost like Bolt um, or um, Lovable again, which is really, really cool. I definitely want to look at this in a bit more detail. I want to see how deep you can go with cursor agents. Like if I give it like a 100 point step-by-step -step list, will it go through that entire list step-by-step -step and create something or you know, will it just kind of fail? So let's see how, yeah, okay, all good here. And then it's just gonna create a readme. And then if I just press accept all here, Okay, so I'm just gonna say, um, make this command forced. Um, actually, I can just, I'm just gonna close cursor and just reopen it, but right click, uh, run as admin. And then we'll open the same folder. You can see it's here, no, control L. Ah, I already had control. And then run the first command, pip install our requirements.txt. Just uh, in case you're interested, by the way, guys, this is all kind of already built into lovable.dev because if you go on lovable and go on, um, I think it's, is it templates? No. Oh, this is new though. That's pretty cool. Um, hang on, lovable.dev integrations. There's something here, integrations, here we go. So I noticed this the other day, it actually has um, integrations with Resend, Stripe, Superbase, Anthropic. You can make an entire SaaS with this. And then, I don't know why it's not here, but if I go on Lovable Changed Log, I noticed this the other day. It just had a change. Where is it? Yeah, look, better support for scraping and no graphs. New integrations with Firecrawl for seamless web scraping. You can make Harbor, like the SaaS that I have made from all of these things here. Harbor has a database, right? So Superbase. Harbor has GitHub, so yeah, that's fine. Harbor is connected to OpenAI. Harbor is connected to Anthropic. Harbor uses Stripe. And then even you could improve on Harbor because Harbor doesn't automate email sending very well. It doesn't do it at all, to be honest with you. This is something that we're trying to work on as um, a software company at the moment, is we're trying to introduce resend. So when someone buys a package, it automatically sends them an email. You could do all of that. Like I could almost rebuild Harbor. And in my head right now, I'm thinking about actually doing this. I could rebuild Harbor with everything here. Lovable is very, very interesting to me. Very, very interesting. But for now, we'll just continue with um, with this. What the hell is this? I've never seen this error. Okay, beautiful. So now we'll do HTTPS, two men dot it. Start crawling, an error occurred. So it looks like async wasn't, um, yeah, async wasn't included. So now we'll do pip uninstall flask. I'm just following what it says here. Proceed, yes. And then pip install requirements.txt. Now I should install it with async. Async basically means it does more than one thing at a time, just so you know, it means asynchronous. Um, I don't, yeah, I never really understood what that means exactly, but not existing or occurring at the same time. Controlling the timing operations by the use of pulses. <laughs> yeah, I, th this is why I don't get what, why they use, why wouldn't they use the word synchronous instead of asynchronous? One thing I've noticed is when it gives um, versions of everything, it never works because it just makes up the version. Just don't put versions, I don't understand why it feels the need to put versioning. It's very annoying. Just fucking uninstall. Oh. Just remove versions or something plus. Never works with versions. Come. Was that so difficult? This shouldn't even be, this should be a non-issue, just install. Like, 
Why do I have to spend 10 minutes? Okay, it does look like it's gonna work. There we go, it's crawling. Doesn't show anything that's happening. That's a good sign. So I'm just gonna use one that I did at the start of this video before I started um, making the video. If I press download CSV here and then just open one of these, you'll see that what this does is it turns this entire web page, which is a very, very big web page, into LLM readable format. So if I do slash F and then write CDN, you'll see that this actually does find images. So if I open this, for example, you'll see that this is a real image. And what you can now start to see is you can say to something like Claude, right? And I would do all of this programmatically, obviously, but if I just go to Claude or ChatGPT, an intelligent model, right? We'll go with 01 preview, with 01, sorry, and I'll say, please find me 10 um, product and uh, product image links uh, and titles that would be good for an article about Italian fashion designers, right? And then we'll send all of that. This might be too big for O1, I'm not sure. No, it does fit. They do have a pretty big context window now, actually. Okay, so we should see, I, sh I should be able to show you what the use of this actually is. Now, obviously, you'll do all of this programmatically in a series of prompts, right? You don't have to use ChatGPT or whatever, but you can very quickly and very easily turn this into your own content generation system, your own keyword system, you know, whatever it might be. So you'll see here, this will now do, you know, what I told it to do. So it's obviously, you know, focusing on Zilli a little bit too much. That's fine. We have three different brands here. So if I open each of these, you'll see this is a real image link. This is a real image link. This is a real, um, I, don't, I don't seem to be able to click it. Go to Markdown to HTML. Just see why we can't click that. There we go. It's a real product link as well. So this is how, to, how people create these systems, right? You can scrape something specific using an LLM. So let's say I wanted to scrape all of my prices, right, from a competitor. You can do that too, right? Um, give me all of the products and pricing for this page, right? So it's going to do exactly the same thing. And again, I'm just showing you how to do this on the front end of ChatGPT, but you can do all of this programmatically if you think about it. I'll leave the video there, guys. This is a very, very exciting project. Crawl for AI is very, very interesting to me. It's a lot cheaper than Firecrawl. Um, I think we're going to do a video very, very soon on Lovable and the fact that it has all of these different integrations. People need to know about that. But for now, this is just a quick, free, open source way to take a web page or several web pages and turn it into something that an LLM can understand. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out. Watch this video if you want to learn about two very exciting developments in AI.